computer, so I had to restart. Welcome back out. Um, my name is Eddie. I'm a full stack web and software developer uh, based out of the U.S. Uh, I'm working on and I have a big, big emphasis on AI development. If, you, if you'd like to learn about more about me and my work, feel free to uh, check out the website, EddieScanna.com. I'm always looking for interesting projects to get connected to. Uh, and really quick, before I dive into to the topic of this video, I want to throw out to you guys, make sure to check out my newest blog, AI Digital Assistant. This is a really cool um, third-party application from uh, uh, from Air AI, and uh, it basically allows you to create a full-fledged digital assistant for yourself that can send, receive calls, text messages, emails, um, and do whatever whatever needs to be done through a phone. It can use your use call your clients, receive calls from the clients. It can fill out forms. Uh, it works with Zapier, so over 5,000 application integrations. Uh, and make sure to check out this this blog. It's really, it's really cool to play the whole thing. I will play a little bit. This is a, an actual AI that's calling this person. Uh, and I'll just let you hear a little bit, just to kind of, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but. So this third party integration from air.ai, uh, once again, uh, definitely can help you um, develop your AI integration uh, technology stacks and help you integrate uh, and deploy some AI systems to help you in your business. Now, speaking of which, today's video, I'm going to be discussing an application that I co-developed with my AI system. Uh, this is an actual, it is a, um, it's called web page summarizer. And this is a Google Chrome extension that I've developed, uh, here just to really kind of solve a problem that I'm having, first of all, which I'll get into the problem in a minute that I'm having to solve a quick pro a problem I'm having, but to also create a very viable, uh, tool, uh, that can be used for a lot of different purposes. Now, I guess I need to start at the beginning with you. Uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure you check out OpenAI. Um, OpenAI has Google has uh, ChatGPT, and let me see if I can do something real quick. See if I can show you this. If you've never messed with um, with OpenAI, let me just do this real quick. Let me try this again. All right, so all right, uh, the, the viewers out there, on the, on, we're streaming to a couple different locations. So shout out to you. Um, I'm still trying to figure all this out. So, all right, so if we, this is ChatGPT. So you've probably heard of ChatGPT. You've, you may have used chat GPT. You may have not. Okay. So it's okay. If you haven't, uh, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but basically what chat GPT is, it allows you to, um, to use a very powerful software that has the ability to communicate like a human. Now chat GPT introduced something called plugins a while back. And plugins allow you to do extra stuff with this tool. So you have this tool that can act almost like a human, and then you can have it do things. So like I could have it, for instance, regular chat GPT, you can just talk to you can say hi, and it will respond back to you, right? This is the basics of chat GPT. Now, the way it does this is uh, the software itself exists like um, – if I could just do this quickly for you. The way this works is chat, uh, chat GPT is a tool. Okay, so essentially it's just uh, a, a type of code. And this code um, 
basically is able to connect what to what's called a large language model. And I'm overly simplifying this just for the sake of the conversation. So this tool is able to use what's called a large language model. You've heard of this LLM, large language model, um, as well as it's able to, um, so a large language model model is something like imagine like if you took a snap out of google all the web let's say snapchat the whole internet for 10 years okay this is the language model essentially so you take a snapshot of the internet or a book or a page and that becomes the large language model and then what the, what chat gpt does chat gpt is able to essentially sift through that large language model uh and pick out patterns essentially it could be like you can imagine like i have a video where i show how you can use python to find a certain set of uh letters or, or words within uh within a book or a document well, the large language model is very similar. So ChatGPT is able to sift through this. And how it does that essentially is through um, something we call weights. Okay. So weights are just basically, it's a way to, it, it, it is what it means. Okay. It's, it, it's, it's a way so, to, to organize the data in values essentially so like what it's like saying the uh chat gbt uses the weights to determine how it should read the uh how it should deal with the large language model so large language model is the raw data set essentially which you could create your own large language model well you can create smaller language models you know large language model is kind of a broad based term but think of your large language model as a library, a library of books. Well, it's one thing to have all these books, but you have to be able to organize these books. And the weights are basically how chat, how the system inter, uh, organizes and deals with the large language model. So the way, so that's that's the magic behind ChatGPT. Now, what that means as far as how it operates and uh, there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of implications with this because when you're dealing with ChatGPT, sometimes you feel like you're dealing with a with a living organism, you know. And uh, I'm not going to say yay or nay personally, but I will say that I'll just you know I have my own my personal beliefs is that we that this idea of AGI, which is um, general you know artificial general intelligence, that the, there's a big question in the world like when are we going to get this artificial intelligence and I, I just i feel like it's all evolution happens in a very steady progression so there's never like a point in which you have agi it just emerges just like everything emerges but that's a whole other thing so if you haven't had a chance make sure to check it out all you need to do is go to chat.openai.com sign up it's free to sign up you get access to the three Point five version of of ChatGPT, but um, I'm you. But it I pay if you pay twenty dollars a month, you get access to ChatGPT version four and a bunch of extra features. Now, in ChatGPT, in ChatGPT, there are things you can do with ChatGPT, so you can have it help like what's the square root of 50 i don't know okay this is going to give you this answer okay now it's doing work it's showing work square root of 50 is seven we can actually see the work that it does here as well shows its work um now i'm using what's called a plugin. these plugins uh they come the plugins come up here at the top you can choose different plugins so you can choose like they had an internet plugin, which I'm going to get the reason. The reason I'm talking about this because I'm going to get that in a moment. But they had a bunch of other plugins. Well, ChatGPT ended up getting rid of the browser plugin, the Bing Bot browser plugin. They had a 
plugin where you can use ChatGPT to actually browse the the live internet, giving you a bigger. Um, if you remember this image, it basically instead of only having ten years, they basically uh, by allowing you to have access to the internet, it opened up this from ten years to just uh, everything. Uh, on the internet, basically anything that's uh, publicly available. Okay. Available. So when we got the internet plugin, basically it was it was amazing because you could have your agent searching online for stuff and getting real time data and using the power of an AI system. Well, there were some problems. OpenAI decided to put the kibosh in that and a lot of people are upset about it because now it's like you can't you don't really have updated information if you're searching like you know information after 2021 you're probably not going to find accurate information from the job gpt so there were other cool things that you could do with chat gpt before so like for instance if you're on amazon let's say you're an amazon affiliate so like I have a I have a website um, Exotic Fi, which is an affiliate marketing website. By the way, if you do need an affiliate marketing uh, help, I can I use powerful AI systems to build websites. Uh, so feel free to reach out to to me for that, and we can cut up that process. But this is an um, this is an affiliate marketing website. Now this website uses types that allow me to be able to create these posts. Okay, I use WordPress for this. And the post types all have like these certain forms that you can put your data in. So like for instance, images. So you can get images you can put in there. You can put a title. This is like an intro paragraph. And these are like stats that are built into the back end. So I can go in there and create these and give them scores. These are buttons. Um, this is a quick summary, obviously. Then here are your specs. Once again, those are special fields that are in this item. So if, like, if I, uh, I don't know if I can go to the back end here, um, see if I can dive into the back end just to kind of give you an idea what I mean. Uh, uh, well, basically, all these little fields have specific things they need. You can see, like, these texts. Now, the thing is, you can't just copy people's content. You have to have original content. So, um, WordPress is a great application. It's a great way to build this site. It's a great way to store data. But it can be a pain in the butt to make all your own information. That's where I came up. Um, that's where you can create, um, prompt, this is where you can use prompt templates. So prompt templates allow you to, um, prompt templates allow you to increase the effectiveness of prompts that you use with the system. So you can create these prompt templates to help you. So like I have one, a prompt tip for a quick talk file. So what does this prompt today look like? Well, let me show you real quick. This is a prompt created. Um, it has a very specific set of requirements. As a content creator and product reviewer for affiliate website, I will, oh, this is uh, actually the result. Um, that's the output. You get the actual input here. This is the actual prompt. So you can create these prompt templates to increase um, accuracy of your output models, outputs that come from your AI systems. So you can see here it says, I need you to act as a content creator and product reviewer. The purpose of your content that you will create will be placed on my affiliate website, quicksidedify.com. The product you'll be reviewing in your content piece is product name. Here are your general details from the product listing site for your reference, and then you can add product listing details. This is the affiliate link we'll be using for this product. Because remember, what we want to do is we want 
our AI system to intelligently create content for us without us having to type that content every time. So we want that process to be as automated as possible. So this is the first step of that. What you do is you figure out, okay, what are the things I'm always doing and how can I create a system around those things? So this is how, this is the, one of the first steps you create a template that produces reliably consistent results. Now, if you don't know what I mean, I'll show you. And there's a reason why I'm showing that because when I dive into the, pl the plugin, you understand more about why it's created and why it's powerful, why the, why the implications are powerful, and maybe hopefully give you some ideas of how you could have an extension built or build an extension to do things that you want it to do. So what I'm going to do here is I have this, this, this template. Let's go ahead and fill it out so I can show you what I mean. So let's go back to ChatGPT. Now, let's just start with basic prompting. If I just said to ChatGPT, uh, let's just go here. Let's say I want to add a new, a new product to my website, to Quixotify. Let's say I want to add a new product to this site. I want to add like, oh, I saw, you know what? There was a cool product that I saw. It was a folding uh, picnic table. Okay, so a folding picnic table. This is one that I got that I really like. Let me see if I can find it. It's got an umbrella. Oh, I hope they didn't get rid of it. By the way, if you uh, want a link for this table, I'll have it in the description. Uh, let's see. Where's that table at? Oh, they must not have anymore with umbrella. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, this table is awesome. If you're looking for like a folding table, this is a great table. Um, had lots of good times with these tables. So like, you got a nice umbrella. Okay, so long. As I'm not going to talk more about uh, the umbrella, this table, but because what we're wanting to do here is we're wanting to, like I said, I'm wanting. Let's imagine I'm wanting to add this product to my website. Now, like I said, I'm using WordPress, so I'm able to come in here. Uh, I'll go ahead and let me just do this or bear with me for a moment. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm back. Um, so let me log into the back of my WordPress site and I'll show you what I mean. So I found a product, I want to add it to my site, right? Now, if I go to my website that I built and I want to add a new product, it, it's not really hard, really. It's not that difficult, but it does take time. Where's the product at? I don't know, I've just seen it. Uh, product reviews. I just want to add a new review. So if I come into the back end of the site and add a new review, I'm going to have a custom post type that's got a bunch of different fields that require very specific pieces of information. I need a title. I need a description. I need images. I need a but You can see all these different things. All these things have to be put in by manually. Now this is, like I said, not too terribly difficult. It takes. It could, I can probably knock this out in about 30 minutes. But the thing is, is with software automation you can take tasks that you do every day over and over again you can automate those tasks using programming okay or uh coding so how would we do that in this case well we know what pieces of information we need so that's why i created the prompt template that i went over with you so let's show you how now so if i went to let me show you an example what I, if i just went to this product listing and I just went like this, just to kind of show you. If I said, um, I need a review of this product. Okay. And I just post this. Like that. What's it going to do? Sorry, I can't directly access external links. Remember I was telling you, OpenAI took away the ability to be able to browse the internet. So what it's saying now is, well, if you if you 
highlight all the text and send it to me. Maybe I can give you a review. So let me just go ahead and try that and see what I can do. I'm going to have a couple of problems. There's only so much space that the system can hold. And this isn't really going to tell it too much. So let me see what happens if I just say, uh, just copy all that and paste it in there. So all you're telling it is, I need a review of this product. So let's just see what kind of review we get off of it. It's probably not going to be a really great, let me kind of, yeah, so you can see that's not perfect. So that's where we use our prompt template. The prompt template allows us to get the information from this site and move it over here and get a very specific style return. Okay, so if you look at this versus uh, If you go look at that versus this, let me go back here. Let's just take, for instance, this, uh, we'll go back to the, the iPad review. You see the difference here with the way that you need this. You need very specific types of information. So that's where we prompt template. Now, the thing is, the prompt template is helpful and it does speed it up. But what if there were an easy way? What if you could now take the next step, which is what if you could have um, an extension read this information? And I got this idea because because I don't because ChatGPT doesn't have the ability to read websites, so it makes it kind of difficult. Which means I have to come in here every time and have to fill in this template, which is cuts down my time about in half, but still about fifteen minutes per post. So. How can we cut that down further? Well, this is where the extension comes into play. The extension bypasses the open API, the open AI's um, block of internet access. What we do is we can build an extension that is able to read this page and give us a report. Now it is under construction, uh, so I'm going to use it on this article that I created here because Amazon site is a little more complicated with some header stuff that I need to, I'm, I'm working on some other functionality of the thing. So let's go with something like this. What is this page about? This is that article that I wrote. Well, we could go through and read this, sure. But what if you wanted your AI to come through and read it? Or if you wanted ChatGPT to interact with this data? Well, ChatGPT Chat, Chat can't unless you copy and paste all the text. That's where this, this plugin comes in. Uh, this plugin in the options section shows your API key. I'm not going to click on that because it will reveal my API key, but it's stored securely within the browser extension system. Uh, this is the code for the um, the plug right now. So if we look here, we have our pop-up HTML, which is the design layout of the plugin. Then we have our pop-up JS, which controls the functions of the application. Now this is a different one I'm working on, but it's a similar. Let's let's, let's go look at the. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add folder to workspace. I'm gonna go to summary of page generator. So this is the summary of page generator that we're gonna be looking at now, which is going to be for this plugin because I am working on a version two version two is going to allow you to interact more with the page as opposed to just get information. But what we want to do is we want a way to bypass chat GPT's restriction of not being able to access the internet. So we're going to do this by using a plugin. So the plugin, what it's going to do is let's say we go to a website like this and we click on the plugin, the plugin, we can click on generate summary. And what it's going to do is it's going to scrape or pull information off the web page, absorb it, send it over to ChatGPT. And then ChatGPT is going to create a response and then send it back here to the, um, to the plugin. Now, this process can take some time because it is communicating across OpenAI's open servers. So 
this can take some time. But you can see it. I don't know how. I don't know if it's going to. Let's see what it does. Let me inspect. So I'm gonna, you can inspect. Oh, there we go. Cool. So check this out. So uh, what's, what, what, what this plugin does, and I'm going to go back. Let's just look at this real quick. It just says um, solving customer service conundrum. Customer service has long been challenging, efficiency and cost. Of, you know, it's got a little work to do, but it is definitely understanding. And so actually it's, yeah, solving. It says solving the customer service conundrum. Customer service has long been a challenging area for business. Providing high quality service to a huge customer base is a complex task and involves massive resources. Enter AI, and suddenly you have a solution that is not only highly scalable, but also can deliver outstanding service 24 7. Advanced AI technology can analyze historical customer data and understand and predict behavior. These smart systems can can detect patterns and trends, which can then be used to create personalized customer experience. Every interaction with the customer becomes an opportunity to learn more about them and improve the level of service. This constant learning and ad adopting process results in significant improvement in the overall customer satisfaction and ultimately customer loyalty. This is actually a really good review. <laughs> like, um, like, this is very interesting because that's a very good review that this thing generated. So how did this happen? Let's go back to the code a little bit and talk. So we see here that we have, man, I want to save that review. Did that, okay, it's still up. Um, control, copy and paste that. All right. So what we have here is we have our pop-up that comes up. This is uh HTML for that. This is the JavaScript that controls the pop-up and the functions. So um, I'm not going to go through all you can see here. Uh, this is where we get we get, we retrieve our API key from here. We have our communications with with OpenAI. Um, this is our model information. This is uh, the fetch OpenAI call that happens where it fetches. Information. There's a fetch um, process that happens there. Um, there's a, there's a lot to go in here. Yeah, I'm going to do a deep dive in this in this code at another other time. Um, this is what we've been working on. So that's what it does. So effectively, so I'm able to reach, scan information on a website, send an open API call to get uh, to open AI to handle to handle the processing. Remember how I showed you this? So what we're able to do now is we are able to utilize Chat GPT and its system. Chat GPT's ability to communicate uh, with weights and large language models. Um we're able to bypass the internet the internet block essentially that's on chat gpt right now god rest his soul uh, so let's imagine that we have a firewall here uh, and we have uh, the internet over here internet web page or website so because ChatGPT can't access this website directly, we then this what we're doing here is we're creating uh, we create this extension that works through a web browser. And that extension is able through API connection to then connect directly over to um, to chat GPT over the, over the firewall kind of chat GPT. We get to utilize these resources and then we send the information back to the extension and the extension, oops, and the extension. 
Let's see if I can do this without messing up. Let's see here. Uh, and the extension is then able to push the data back into the website. Okay, so now you can interact with ChatGPT through bypassing the restrictions that you have uh, accessing it from ChatGPT to the internet by using a browser extension to do that. Now, once again, this extension is not on uh, any, uh, is not out right now. It is right now just in my browser, but this is the web page I'm working on it right now in development. So um, eventually I'll have it out where you can test it and use it, but this is just something I've been messing around with as I'm learning how to develop for myself and uh, for these projects we've been working on. So it's getting late. It's time to clock out for the evening. Wish you guys all the best and uh, happy, as always, happy coding, everybody. Peace out.